Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today, our webinar uh, for parents, Parenting in Quarantine. Today, we're going to be talking about quality time, how to achieve it. Uh, well, so although the days with children, especially the little ones, uh, might seem long, the years fly by. Today, we will talk about how to create time and space to savor those moments you have together. But first, let's talk about a little uh, about parenting styles, since it can affect everything from how you make decisions to what you prioritize or not. Uh, rather than thinking which parenting, parenting style is the best, we should understand that our parenting style is usually a learned pattern from our family of origin. Um, of course, when we are raising our children with a partner, we have to take into consideration our partner's parenting style and try to find a common ground. Uh, usually, conflicts in this area where parents can't agree or one disauthorizes the other one may bring us result of uh, manipulative children or emotionally unstable kids because they don't know what to expect. How can we discuss the topic with our partner? First of all, uh, talk about your goals. You need to be working towards the same thing. What are your parenting goals? What qualities and values do you want to support and nurture in your children? What is important to each of you? What kind of parent do you want to be? What do you want your children to remember about you? All these questions might guide that conversation with your partner. Talk about your views on children on parenting. Do they need to change? We are constantly reevaluating why we do things. Uh, have you thought about why are your parenting uh, style the way you are? Or are you just following what we know from our childhood or what society expects? Uh, discover your strengths and weaknesses. Are you aware of, of what strengths and weaknesses are in your parenting? Do you help each other to go through them? It's also helpful to talk about uh, why we think some things are harder for us. Whether it's because of how we were parented ourselves or it brings up memories of something we've dealt with in the past. Don't accuse or blame. We should avoid uh, do that, doing that all the, all the time, but it, it, sometimes it can be difficult. When, when something happens and the other person makes a mistake, what we usually do is we react. And uh, it, it's not really helpful to, to accuse or to blame our partner. Sometimes it, it, it is an instant reaction, but try to avoid that. Parenting is a hard work and you are not going to get it right every time. So instead of telling your partner what do you think they did wrong, uh, you can ask, how do you feel about what happened? Or why do you think that happened? Or what do you both think will be the best way to handle it in the future? The... Um, remember, this is an ongoing conversation, okay? Uh, it's not something you just talk about once and you forget about it. It's, it's something you keep talking about because your children grow and change. 
uh, and if you if you have more children, all of them have different personalities, and you need to keep the lines of communication open so that you can remain in the same page. So the important thing to remember is to ensure your parenting style is supporting healthy growth and development. Because the way you interact with your children and how you discipline them will influence them for the rest of their lives. Uh, that's why today we are discussing uh, this topic, quality time. And we must take into consideration that quality time may mean or look different in each family, okay? But there are certain facts that apply to all, and today we're gonna learn about that. One thing we can't deny is that time flies by. Did you know that there are only 940 Saturdays between a child's birth and, her, and, and them leaving for college? That may sound like a lot, right? But how many have you already used? If your child is, let's say, five years old, 260 Saturdays are gone already. Poof, like in a blink of an eye. And the older your kids get, the busier they, the, their Saturdays are gonna start to become with friends and activities, okay? When you add up all the time your kids spend at school, asleep, at friends' home, with babysitters, at camp, or otherwise occupied with activities that don't include you, the remain, remaining moments become specially precious. Depending on your children's age and whether you work outside home or not, there might be as few as one or two hours a day during the week for you to spend with them. And this is something we need to do uh, with consciousness, okay? The, the, uh, may, uh, trying to, to, to find that quality time. Because, however, instead of worrying about how many minutes you can spend with your children each day, let's try to focus on, those, on turning those minutes into memorable moments, okay? Parents often compensate for having such a small quality time, quantity of time, by scheduling quality time. That's why I said before, this is something we have to do from our consciousness with awareness, okay? Every day brings new growth, new challenges, new milestones, uh, new wonderment. But the challenges of, of juggling our, our, our adult lives often prevent us from, from fully appreciating the delicate shades of childhood. Okay, so let's let's do an exercise. Okay, let I would like you to close your eyes right now, and um, imagine your biological parenthood clock went forward to the time when your children have grown and have left home. Picture their messy bathrooms as clean and empty. See the back seat of the car vacuumed and without a car seat or crumbs. Playroom shelves neatly stacked with dusty toys. Laundry under control. Then rewind that imaginary clock back to now and see today's minutes of mayhem for what they are, finite and transitory. How's it, how does that feel? What would you change now? Open your eyes now and remember, not every day with your kids will be perfect.
but hopefully one day you will greet their departure. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> with the pressure, with a profound sense. Of, with a profound sense of satisfaction. I'm sorry, with a profound sense of satisfaction because you have given them what they need to succeed and also given yourself what you need to feel like a successful parent. Although we cannot slow, slow down time, today Ms. Roxana is going to share with us some ideas about uh, how to optimize the time we spend with your kids. Okay, so go ahead, Ms. Roxana. Ms. Roxana. Okay, now I unmute myself. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, after this introduction, we should ask this question, what is quality time? So quality time is an informal reference to time spent with close family members, partners, friends, and it's like a special and important um, moment to everyone involved. So it is time that is set aside for paying full and undivided attention to someone that we care about. It may also refer to time spent performing favorite activities. So we can have quality time with our children, but also with ourselves. Today, we're going to focus on how to establish quality time with our children. Some benefits of having quality time with children are related to mental health and emotional health and also behavior. So there's a lot of research that shows that kids learn how to interact with others based on what they see at home. So it is super important not to only tell your child that you love him or her, but also show them that you do. By And one of the ways is having or spending quality time with them. And also less behavior issues. So you would probably have fewer arguments and family fights will be less severe. Maybe they will be less likely to have problems in school in terms of disobedience and they will be less likely to engage in risky behaviors, such as going against the rules or trying drugs or alcohol when they are teenagers, for example. So it is very important to consider making quality time as part of your daily routine. And actually, we talk about daily routines in our first um, webinar for parents, and we included some of these tips in how to establish a daily routine, but now it's time to talk more in depth about quality time. So I'm gonna share some ideas. Of course, um, you could open your creativity and do anything that you consider would improve the quality time you spend with your children. So the first of all, you need to spend time, of course. You need to dedicate some time of your day to focus on your child or on your children if you have more than a kid. You can set up a game or special play time or for, for other, older children, you can dedicate time to talk or share any activity. Research indicates that even just five minutes can build a healthy relationship. Five minutes of undivided attention. To better communicate, you can use like uh, this mnemonic called PRIDE, which includes praise, reflect, imitate, describe, and enthusiasm. Okay, another tip is to reduce distractions because now digital gadgets are are all over. We have our cell phones, laptops, iPads, TVs, everywhere in our house. And this might distract us from painful attention. So we might be with our children and then reading some messages and texting someone or answering emails. I am sorry, but that is in quality time. You need to make it, um, you can, you need to put away your devices and engage with your children instead of your apps. 
unless let's say your child loves to play video games and, and then you're playing video games for your child for 20 minutes that's also an option an option but if that's not the case put your cell phones aside and focus on your child okay another tip is to use praise by praising your child during your interactions you can use like specific you can focus on specific behaviors like nice job keeping your hands to yourself thank you for sharing what happened at school with me well in this case thank you for sharing about your zoom meeting or your hangouts meeting so it's very important that you build that confidence during those special moments together okay another strategy is to reflect not reflect like thinking about your actions but reflecting verbatim what your child says and this is excellent during temper tantrums or whining for the younger kids you don't start negotiating um, and it also makes your child feel heard for example if your child tells you i don't want to go last in a game you can tell you don't want to go last okay we can take turns or use whatever strategy to solve the problem no matter how much they beg or complain simply repeat what they say and this could also work with feelings sometimes especially well it can happen even with teenagers but especially with younger children they feel a little confused about their feelings and you can reflect them like um okay i can see that you are feeling scared or angry or sad because you're doing this and this and that reinforces their sense of um, community with you, let's say, because they will feel that you are very interested and engaged in your interactions. Um, well, go, okay. So, uh -huh. going back to the example, it tends to set boundaries and leaves their child feeling that they've been listened to. Okay. Another tip is to support your child's interest. So now that we are at home, you can sign up for online activities that your child is interested in or do activities at home together. And also be sure to allocate your time for his or her practice sessions, classes, or performances. You can join them sometimes and that could be like a special time together. Your presence is a sure way of showing support. So that's another tip. This is my favorite, I think. You need to have fun. Do an activity of your child's choosing or give them options for them to choose. And be sure to follow through and complete the activity without any distractions. So make sure that you have the enough amount of time to complete that activity and just play with your child. Even if it's during bad time or outside before you drop her at uh, preschool, we're not dropping anyone at preschool, but before going into our sessions, um, we can have like a little, you know, special time together. And every little bit of time makes a positive impact. Laugh and be silly with your child. Another idea that is not written here is also to make little notes to your children uh or leave them messages or little videos or voice notes to them throughout the day and uh, mostly if you're like um working from home and you need to have your own space to do that at home also integrate them children love to help and, so, and teenagers too for example you need to make dinner okay let them help you by contributing to the preparation process there's a lot of people who are discovering a new talent to cook these days, but it's not limited to that. You can do it to any house activity. And it might be messy at the beginning and, and maybe it will take more time, but then you will see that your children or your teenagers are the best helpers. And this could be like a really nice memory that they will remember in the future, like, oh, we used to cook together, or this was a special time um, during the quarantine, like cooking dinner together as a family, or like mom and daughter or son together or dad. Create family traditions. 
So this is something that you probably have, and maybe now is the opportunity to create new traditions. It could be simple, like watching, a, having a movie night or a board game night. It depends on your family interest. You can have theme dinner, like pizza night, or you can play, I don't know, different games together. These activities will impart long lasting memories that will always be cherished. So overall, quality time spent doing something the whole family enjoys is much better than quantity time, as me, as Yanisel talked at the beginning. Because in quantity time, we're not really interacting with each other. So it is up to us to help our children grow into well-adjusted and happy individuals as it's uh, as easy as spending more quality time together. So we were talking about memories. So you can uh, choose between these two options, like your children remembering this time at home as being uh, lonely or sad or creating new memories as a family that they will remember for life. So now we have questions and answers. <laughs> okay. um, I just want to add to what, what, to what you just said, Roxana, that sometimes when we think about quality time, and I want to recall this from what I said before, uh, we think about parents tend to stress about about that, about, about that idea of quality time. Um, and uh, we've said before that, you know, judging ourselves is, is part of, of that um, personal revision that we are constantly doing about how can I do this better? But sometimes parents tend to be very judgmental and that raises up some a sense of guilt that I'm not doing enough, I'm not doing, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to, or or maybe my children are lacking of this or, or that, uh, um, and that that tend to stress parents. And usually, that that stressful feeling what causes is to like for them to to freeze when they have to think about how can they make possible or how can they achieve quality time, and. Uh, as I, as I said before, if quality time might look different for for each family, depending on, on your routines, depending on your family structure, depending on, on your on, on your parenting style or, or you know the way you manage your 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 daily lives, that that will create different scenarios depending on your possibilities to find those moments of quality time. Uh, what we said is that you have to be a, you have to be aware that you are taking the the most advantage you can of that moment, and it could be a ride in the car, it could be a transition between you know school and uh, an, an extracurricular activity, or during the bath if you have uh, little children. Uh, during you know dinner, um, while watching TV, it could be any moment. the 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 idea is to to bring it to awareness or consciousness where you can where you can create those connections and 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 you can really pay attention to what you are doing. So it's about you know mindfulness a little bit about you know the being present for that moment now and hear about what we are doing together. It, it's not about how much time, it's more about what we do during that time. Yes, yeah, so and now that, now that you were talking, uh, it reminded me of children from families that are not together, maybe because one of the parents stayed in another country, we have some of those, or maybe because parents are divorced. And then um, these children have to interact with one of the parents online. Mm -hmm. And it's not only, as you mentioned, it's not only about like the time, the amount of time they spend together, but that you are mindful and present 
and your full attention and your energy is directed towards your child so that they feel that you care, that you love them, that you're interested, and that you are enjoying that time together. Not like, okay, I'm having this uh, moment with you, but then, but I am looking at my cell phone or I am doing something else that is not related to this space that we've created for the two of us or the three of us. And I think that is the key to be really, as you mentioned, aware, present, and enjoying that time together to ensure that your child feels loved and, and important. Mm -hmm. I think Ms. Manzanares wanted to add something. I wanted to, I have a question. Um, when you have a big family and you have more than, when you have many children, um, should, is it more, is it better if you spend quality time individually or can you group them or how would it work in that case? Well, I'm sorry, oh well. Do you want to say something? I, I can add, you can share and then I can add something. Yeah, yeah. well, I'm, I'm thinking that, of course, you have to find a way to make it work and it will work differently for each type of family. Um, of course, numerous, numerous families have that, that, that struggle sometimes, like finding time for everyone. And sometimes it's more effective if you do it in, in, in groups all together with, uh, with, with I, I love what you said before, Roxana, uh, about creating family traditions. That saves a lot of time because everybody is engaged and everybody is expected to participate at the same time. But I also think that, that, that uh, children need their personal their personal times and spaces. Each child needs their personal time and spaces. So if you can find sometimes, if, if you have boys and girls, you can group them. You can like do like a girls uh, a girls uh, afternoon or an afternoon with the boys, and you can do things with you know uh, with small groups within the family, but also. Uh, finding those times individually for approach your children in a one-on-one -on -one moment, I think it will be very beneficial because maybe because you have you, you may have children in different stages of development, uh, a teenager might need their own time to talk about their concerns or younger children might have different needs. So you can balance. I, I wouldn't say this is right, this is wrong. It, it's, a, it's more about, I would like to think of this about a more flexible thing where you can find the way to make it work according to your possibility. And also take into consideration your children's personalities. That's super important because uh, that will help you to make those decisions like, well, uh, well, Anita and Manganita, they get along. They get along better than if I <laughs> sit down and talk with you know, because also uh, different age groups, uh, it, it's harder sometimes to share. Uh, for example, teenagers with with little children. So you can find a way to to group your family members. But I will say, individual time it's also important. It doesn't have to be on a daily basis. But if in, during throughout the week you can find that time to share one on one, that that's also a good idea. Yes, and I wanted to add that you, as a parent, know your children better than anyone, and you can have a sense of their needs, like who needs what in what moment. So, I agree that every child in the family needs at least uh, a couple of minutes individually in a week, let's say. But you can also have a sense, like what are their needs right now or who might need me and let them and be open with them. Like I'm available for, for you, like you can always count on me. And if you need me, like just the two of us, know that I'm available for that. Thank you. Another thing I wanted to add is that, um, you know, uh, 
quality time is about uh, engagement. I, 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 I think about it like, you know, the quality of the engagement we are having at a, at a specific moment. That's why it's not so much about the amount of time, but what happened during that, during that time. And uh, last week we were talking about, you know, um, being active listeners. Uh, and I think that that really makes a, a huge difference when we, when we are talking to our children, because you can spend 15 minutes in a conversation that might be not that productive. And, and that, is, that is something that parents uh, um, say quite often. Like I ask my children, how was your day? What did you do today? What did you learn? And they are like, nothing, nothing, nothing. Like, you know, very vague responses and it's hard to, to make them engage in the deep conversation. Uh, so I, I, I like to think more about like what the quality of questions we are asking them, what we are, how we are showing our interest and how not only through the question, but what, what happens next? Like when they start talking to us, how do we, our body language, are we showing our engagement? Are we keeping eye contact? Are we uh, using basic uh, strategies such as, for example, rephrasing what your child just said? Like, so what you mean is that uh, you're saying that you're feeling like this and that, or, or you would like to do this and that. It's like rephrasing in your own words what, what they just said. Re uh, that uh, gives them back the idea that you are actually listening to them. So that is really important. That, those strategies in communication, which make you know communication more effective, and also show that that you are actually listening from your heart. And if that happens, you don't have to have this long conversation, 10, 15 minutes. It's just you know a five profound conversation in, during you know for five minutes could could have a greater impact than spending 30 minutes there just trying to talk about something and the other person is blocking the way. Yes, I would like to say that to have these, these moments or to be available for our children, it's not only about the external, um, you know, reality or environment like, like uh, devices or work, etc. It's also being available emotionally. So you, like we as adults need to, as we talked last week, need to take care of ourselves and ensure that we also have our own quality time with ourselves so that we are more available emotionally to offer that quality time to our children. So make sure that you also do things that you enjoy with yourself, like reading a book or taking a bath. It could be as simple as that. Uh, I don't know, eating something you like or watching something on TV that you enjoy so that you are emotionally available. The more balanced and happy and calm we as adults feel, the more available we will be for our children to have those like special quality moments. There's a question that we can't read on the chat, but Miss, Miss Aida sent it to me. And it says, some parents feel helping their children with schoolwork is draining their relationship. What is a good way to transform that into a positive quality time? So this is a question she has. I don't know if she's still here. Yes, she is. Well, actually, that is a, a, a really good question. And, and I can imagine many parents asking that uh, to themselves, like, how can I improve uh, my relationship uh, with my child? Because they're not teachers, like they're not yeah. trained teachers, they don't yeah. know. Exactly, right now that they're wearing that hat, you know, the teacher's hat. Uh, and I will say, you know, the, the first step I, that I would recommend will be like, you know, acceptance and understanding that this is a new role 
that you might find, find challenging. And also it's like a personal reflection. What is it challenging for me from, from, from this role? And what is that is causing me so much trouble? Uh, is it that I don't, don't get the way the, the learning process is happening? Or is it that I really don't understand how are, how can I go through the assignments? Because this could be overwhelming for parents, uh, you know, uh, getting into the different platforms like, okay, Google Classroom or Seesaw and then following through. But, and, and I would say like in our particular case, the math case, teachers have, have tried to structure things in a in a very clear way but if you still have questions about it you can always ask the teacher like uh teacher how can i reach to this information how can i follow up because i will say that right now all that stress that parents are are feeling in in regards of you know deteriorating their relationship with their children because when you're stressed and you sit down at a table with your child and you try to figure out what do they have to do and what what what's pending what do they have to complete have they submitted thing uh it's overwhelming and if you're stressed it will become an escalation emotional escalate in which you will finish the 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 situation with an argument and you are going to get more stressed you're gonna get upset your child is gonna get a, be affected uh and nothing positive is you know coming from that so th the first thing is to calm down a little bit and to understand that even though this is not what i expected for, uh, i uh, maybe in our minds my, we're expecting you know children should be at school dealing with this the teacher should be uh doing their work and they should be in charge of that that's not you know the reality for everyone some children need extra help and the first thing i will say we need to embrace we need to accept this new role and if it's challenging and if it's difficult we need to accept that too okay this is hard for me i i'm not understanding i'm not getting this okay let's find the help we need let me contact the teacher let me contact you know uh, whoever can help me another parent maybe uh they can support me with the the process that I'm not getting because I think that all that frustration that comes uh, that our parents are experiencing right now has to do with not knowing, not understanding, not being quite clear about what is expected or how they should support their child. So I don't know if you have anything else to add to that, Roxana. It's raining very hard here, so I hope you can listen. Well, yeah, yeah we have, I have met with a lot of parents who are struggling right now, and most of them are the ones that have more than one child because, of course, they, don't, they didn't study for this. They, it's a new role for them. And one of the things that I've been recommending and that is working sometimes is that they if they can, if possible, can sit with them in some sessions with a teacher, if that's a possibility, so that the teacher is sort of modeling for them and they are more aware of what is going on, like the group dynamic and what is the, the assignment that the, their child is um, expected to do. And like always asking help from the, from the teacher, from the counselors, um, I'm having a lot of sessions to for counseling where parents and kids are involved, both of them. And we are always here available to guide you. Of course, it's very difficult to answer like one single, like, you know, way to do it. So it's better if you reach out to us and then we can learn more about your particular situation and understand how to help you better. But one way that I found that is very useful is that you take some of your time in your routine to also participate or just not like participate talking or sharing, but just being there and listening a little bit. How is the dynamic 
of the group happening in a class and what is expected from your child. And the most important thing right now is relationships. So we want to prioritize relationships over anything else. Um, so if you feel overwhelmed that at, to a point that you don't know what else to do, we are always here available to listen to you, to your particular situation, and then guide you through the process. So that's what has happened. There's another comment here. Um, okay, what are some positive responses we can give to our children when we're losing patience so we don't hurt our relationship? You know, today I was talking to um, a mom from EC4. I've been working with her child for a while. And she was telling me today, Ms. Roxana, you know what? I found out that when my reactions are more calm, his reactions are better too. So she's been with us in the sessions since the, since the lockdown started. And after a couple of weeks, she's realizing that the more uh, positive she is, the more positive her child will respond. So if you're losing patience, which is totally fine, and it could happen, take a break too. Just take a break. It, we are recommending this for children, and this is for you as well. Just take a break, do something that helps you calm down, and then with a fresh, have a conversation with your child, and then with a fresh mind, start again and try maybe in a different way. Um, that could be, you know, more positive for both of you. So, yeah, I don't know. yeah it, it's about, you know, remember that word all the time, escalation. It's an escalator, emotional escalator. If you are frustrated, your child responds to that with more frustration and it starts going up and building up from there, but if you show, uh, you know, a calm reaction, if you show an empathetic reaction, and you can say like, I, I can see this is really difficult for you, I understand it, and right now it's also a little difficult for me too. And that's super empathetic, that's showing to your child that you are also struggling with, uh, you know, understanding what they have to do and they are not alone. And that is a very powerful feeling. And and that creates a, a, a very deep connection with your child. So uh, if, as we were saying last week, if we have to learn to regulate our, our emotions and regulate our emotion is not about avoiding them or, you know, like putting them aside and forgetting about them. It's a regulation, it's understand, first of all, being aware of what I'm feeling, and second, thinking about what is what is causing this, and where is this coming from, and the, and the, the most important part, thinking, what do I need right now? Maybe the answer to that is a break, like what kind of just said. If, if it's a break, you go out, you take a break, you go to another room, you drink water, whatever you need to do, and that also shows your child, you are modeling for them, positive responses to emotions, to our emotions. It's not about like, um, like okay, I am ex I'm feeling anger and I'm going to explode and react and, and scream and yell. It's like, okay, I'm feeling frustrated, I'm feeling angry, I'm feeling, you know, unpleasant emotions. I'm going to take a break. We're, let's stop here. Let's do something different and then come back later when you are much, you know, when you're calmer. Yes. And also, and also in the chat here, um, I'm reading some comments about um, doing it together as a team. Like it's valid to say, I don't know how to do this yet. Using a little bit of growth mindset speech, like we don't know this yet. This is a challenge, but we can do it together as a team. And then you create or you build up to that sense of um, community between or belonging and empathy between you and your child so that they know it's okay not to know everything, but you can work together to actually accomplish something. So all these things or ideas 
of course, we know it's easier to say than to do, but know that we are always here available to listen to you and guide you as much as possible. Yes, and these are times to request help. Uh, these are times that we have to, to, to use all the resources we have at hand. And uh, those resources can be, you know, not just like, um, uh, it could be, you know, asking the teacher for help, uh, asking the counselors for some strategies or resources, uh, and, and, and don't forget that what works for you might not work for another person. You can also ask another parent, uh, how are you managing this? How are you dealing with this? Um, you know, these are times to ask for help. We are, we are not alone. Many people are going through this experience. And I, I like to think that we can all together build up a more resourceful community if we use you know each other to improve the way we are doing things right now because many of the things we're doing right now are are new for for many of us so oh, let's use each other let's use each other okay do we have more questions <laughs> okay so this session is recording is recorded now and we are going to post it on our different uh, on, a, on our YouTube channel. We, I think we're going to post it on the newsletter that we send out weekly. And also know that every Thursday there's a webinar uh, from the series Parenting in Quarantine from 2 to 3 p.m. So see you next Thursday. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.